Uh, in this case, let's do an integral from one to four of the following nasty looking quantity. One over square root of x uh, times one plus the square root of x dx. Now prior to this point in calculus, an integral like this, you know, should uh, frighten and scare you. you know, I'm just kidding a little bit, but it does look a little bit intimidating, right? I mean, you've got square roots going uh, running around, they're wrapped up in you know, some parentheses on the bottom, and then the entire thing is on the bottom of a fraction. So that's just kind of ugly. Um, so what I always suggest, and you know, you don't have to do this, but what I always suggest is that anytime you have little square roots like this, always write them as powers, fractional powers. Uh, it just helps me visualize what I need to do. So let's just take a moment before we do any calculus to write this as x to the one half on the bottom, parentheses, one plus x to the one half down here. So it's the same integral, just written slightly differently. Now we know we're going to need to do some sort of substitution, right? We, we suspect that just because usually when integrals are any more complicated than the most basic ones, you're going to need to hunt around for some kind of substitution. So like I've said in the past, you know, you just need to kind of do trial and error and get some experience with this kind of thing before you really get good at figuring out what is going to actually be the right substitution. But we can hunt around and do some educated guessing. If we chose this entire quantity in the parentheses as our uh, u, then if we take the derivative of this, the derivative of this would be uh, zero, so it wouldn't be anything. And the derivative of this would be 1 half times x to the negative 1 half because you subtract 1 on the exponent when you take derivatives. So ultimately, if you use this as u, you're going to get something involving x to the 1 half at the, in the end of the day, which if, depending on how you flip it around when you plug it back in, it might cancel with this one out here. So it's a little hard to wrap your brain around that, you know, just by looking at it, but at least at a first glance you know that, hey, if I take this derivative, there's a chance that it'll cancel. So my advice is if you think you have a chance, go ahead and try it. And if it doesn't work out, if you don't get the cancellation, if it doesn't simplify, then you go back to square, run, square one and try something else. So for now, let's go ahead and say that u will indeed be equal to one plus x to the one half. Then du dx, the derivative of this with respect to x, this will be zero. This will be one half times x to the negative one half because we take one minus the exponent. And one half minus one is negative one half. All right, so then what we're going to have, to save space a little bit, I'm gonna write the simplification over here. dx, solving for dx, is going to be equal to what we're basically going to do is take this whole thing and move it over there. So basically what we're going to have is one over one half x to the negative one half du. Just think about it. You move the dx over here and take this whole entire quantity and move it underneath to, to solve for your dx. Now this looks a little ugly with the fraction on the bottom and all that. So we'll simplify it. We'll say that dx is equal to the two can flip on the top. And look here, the x to the negative one half can also flip to the, to the top. So you have two x to the positive one half du. Make sure you understand what's going on there. Basically, since you have one over one half, you can flip this fraction over and the two will go on the top. And since you have a negative exponent, you can pull it to the top and make it positive. So this is our substitution for dx. And look, we have an x to the one half, which should cancel with our x to the one half that's on the bottom when we get around to, to actually doing the final substitution. So what we're going to have is the integral from one to four of the quantity uh, one over x to the one half times u. u is because this is what we define u to be. And then dx we've defined to be two times x to the one half d u. And this works out pretty darn nicely because we have an x to the one half on the bottom, we have an x to the one half on the top. So really all we have at the end of the day is we have a two and then we have a one over u. So just to rewrite this, it'll be two times the integral from one to four of one over u du. This is something we know how to integrate because we've been talking about this. When you have the integral of one over your variable, it's just the natural log. So what you'll have is two times the natural log absolute value of u, don't forget your absolute values. There's no constant of integration because this is a definite integral from one to four. And obviously we cannot plug the limits of integration in here 
because this is a integral answer in terms of u, which is sort of our made up variable. Um, and these limits are in terms of x. So we need to substitute back in. So what we'll have is 2 times the natural log of the absolute value. u we define to be 1 plus x to the 1 half. 1 plus x to the 1 half. And we're evaluating it from 1 to 4, like this. And so what we'll have is we'll have 2, and we'll open up a bracket, and we'll just evaluate this at the top limit minus evaluating it at the bottom limit. So we'll have natural log, absolute value, 1 plus 4 to the 1 half. And then we'll subtract off the natural log of 1 plus 1 to the 1 half. And I know this looks a little bit weird, but these are absolute value symbols, and you have 1 plus 1 to the 1 half. So we're rapidly getting down to the final answer. Don't forget we have our 2 outside of our brackets here. And what we have here inside, we have 1 plus 4, 4 to the 1 half. This is like square root of 4. Square root of 4 is 2, right? 2 plus 1 is 3. And since it's already positive, the absolute values can, can be removed now because you know what's inside there is already positive. So natural log of 3, okay? And then you have a minus natural log. What do you have in here? You have uh, square root of 1 here, which is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. This is already positive, so you can drop the absolute value. So you have natural log of 2. All right? And because we know that anytime you subtract logarithms like this, it's like dividing. You can, as we've done before, you can make, write it as a division. Natural log of 3 halves. So when they're subtracted, it's the top one divided by the bottom one. It's an easier way to simplify it. So 2 times the natural log of 3 halves. So again, a, an ugly looking integral with the proper substitution can be resolved to something you know how to, to find. So we just define this guy to be u, we take the derivative and we get something and at this point you should know if your integrals are going to work out because you can look and you can, you can see that this is going to cancel. So we put it all in, this cancels, and then we're left with the integral of 1 over u which we know is a natural logarithm, and then the rest of it just follows from plugging it in. And again, choosing this as your u does come with some experience. I mean, in the beginning, you might not choose that to be u. You know, you might choose, for instance, another good guess for u might be just to make x to the 1 half to be u, like this. So in other words, instead of 1 plus x to the 1 half, just like this, u could be equal to x to the 1 half. In fact, you might think that's the perfect answer, right? Because when you do all this, you're going to get the same exact derivative, right? And so you're going to get the same exact thing for here. And so the cancellation will still occur. So you might say, why don't you do that? Well, if you choose just x is equal to that, x to the 1 half, uh, u is equal to x to the 1 half as the uh, variable for u, then the cancellation will happen. But you won't have 1 over u down here. You will have, because if you think about it, if you, if you choose this to be u, you will have 1 over 1 plus u down here. This will still cancel if you do it all, but in the end, you won't have 1 over u. You'll have 1 over 1 plus u. And 1 over 1 plus u is not something we know how to integrate. So, you know, it works. You can still choose values of u that will give and yield to cancellations, but at the end of the day, what you're trying to do is find a u that will give you your cancellations and simplify your integral down to something you know how to solve. So if you get down to that point and you, you don't immediately recognize how to solve it, then just stop racking your brain and just realize that you've chosen either, you've chosen the wrong u for your substitution, or you've made a simple mistake somehow in your derivative and you haven't canceled things properly. So when you get down to that point, when you substitute in, this is the best piece of advice I can give you here with these problems. When you get down to the point where you substitute in for you, if you don't see that it's simplified enough for you to solve it quickly, then you probably just made a mistake somewhere. And it's better just to sort of start over uh, you know, and sort of fresh start rather than just beating your head against the wall because then you're just going to waste time. So what for our next problem, let's say we have something interesting looking, natural log of, and inside the natural log we have another natural log of t like this, so we have a nested natural log, and on the bottom we have t times the natural log of t dt. So again, this looks like an ugly integral, but anytime you see an ugly integral, you should say to yourself, you know what, there's got to be a u substitution I can do here to simplify this greatly. What will it be? There's lots of things you could choose. You could say, well, let's try u is equal to natural log of t. Let's try u is equal to t. Let's try lots of things. Well, the one that works when you try a bunch of paths is u is equal to the natural log of 
the natural log of t. I can't really give you and tell you why that jumps out in the beginning. Um, you just have to sort of try it and see if it happens, but I can tell you one thing. The most complicated looking part of this, this integrand here is the numerator, this nested uh, logarithm. So I'd really like to simplify that, and choosing this as u is going to simplify that greatly uh, because you know, I'm setting the whole thing equal to u. So I'm gonna just going to try to go on that, on that assumption. Uh, du dt, how do you do that? Well, you have a nested natural log, and notice that we've already talked about that the derivative of the logarithm, the derivative of the natural logarithm, is just one over, over uh, t in this case, one over your variable. It's the same reason we've talked about before. If you take the integral of one over x, you're gonna get a natural log of x. So then by definition, if you take the de derivative of the natural logarithm of x, you should get one over x. So they go back and forth, and we've talked about that in the previous section, how now you know what the derivative of the logarithm is. But this is not just the derivative of the logarithm. This is the derivative of the logarithm of a logarithm nested inside. So you're going to use the chain rule. So using the chain rule here, this is the outer logarithm. So the first derivative would just be one over natural log of t, right? Because the inside is what we're just pretending to be, you know, our dummy here. And so it goes on the bottom, one over natural log of t. But then you have to multiply it by the derivative of the inside. The inside happens to be another natural log. So it's going to be one over t, right? So I know that looks a little bit ugly and a little bit weird, but you need to wrap your brain around that, that they're just nested. So at first cut, you say, well, it's going to be, since the derivative of the logarithm is one over t, and since this is on the inside, it's one over t of natural log of t, times the derivative of the inside becomes one over t, all right? So then what we have is we will say dt is equal to uh, t times natural log of t du. Make sure you understand that. If you move the dt over here and then you move divide this to get it on the other side, then both of these guys are going to flip over and you're going to be left with t times natural log of t du. So we've got everything in place to substitute in. So we will have the integral. On the numerator, see it's so complicated looking, but since we defined u to be equal to it, it's just a u. And then we have t times the natural log of t. And then here dt is defined to be t times natural log of t du. And you can see right away that we made the right choice. And this is kind of what I was getting at a minute ago. When you do complicated substitutions like this, at this step you should know if you've done it right, basically without doing any more work, because everything cancels and simplifies in such a nice way that you know that you did everything right. If you don't get a nice cancellation here or something, then you've chosen the wrong u. Go back to the drawing board and choose something else and you'll just get experience after a while. So what we have is simply the integral of u du, which is one of the simplest ones we know how to integrate. So what we'll have is 1 half u squared plus a constant of integration, right? And um, u, we know, is 1 half u we've defined to be natural log of natural log of t. That whole thing is squared plus a constant of integration. So the answer is one half natural log of the natural log, quantity, entire quantity squared, plus a constant of integration. And I'll leave it as an exercise for you. If you take this answer, just like all answers to these integral problems, if you take the derivative of this, you should get back the inside of what we have here. That's just how integrals work. I mean, how you can always check your work if you really want to know. So take the derivative of that and you'll find out when you simplify it, you can get this guy right there. So that concludes this section on uh, logarithm as an integral or logarithms involved in integration. And it also concludes these, uh, this topic, right, of, of dealing with one over x in an integral or one over u or one over t. The bottom line is that what we were trying to teach is that whenever you see one over x or one over t or one over u in an integral, you always are going to get a natural logarithm as a, res as a result. And so simple problems that are just dealing with, you know, straight out one over x, what's the integral of that? You know how to handle it. But more importantly, when you do more complicated integrals, like this is a pretty complicated integral, right? And then when you do a proper substitution, you can get it down into a form that is easy to integrate. In this case, we got it down to a form that's even easier to integrate. But what you had to know is you had to know how to take derivatives of natural logarithms. And the only way you know how to do that in this problem is because we've learned that the integral of one over t, or the integral of one over x or whatever, is just natural log of x. And so by definition, the derivative of natural log of x 
is one over x. So file that away because the derivative of the natural logarithm and the integral of one over x are super important concepts for you to understand going forward. I mean, we've done enough of these problems to see that you might have an integral that looks like it's going to have nothing to do with a natural logarithm, but once you do your substitution, it boils down to a situation where you might actually need to know about the natural logarithm. You cannot tell from looking at the original problem that your answer is actually going to involve a natural log. You just can't. You just need to bang through it and do the substitutions and then crank through it. So make sure you can do all of these problems. This concept and these topics are so important. Make sure you can do all of these and then follow us on to the next section where we will continue learning uh, techniques of integration, getting lots of practice, uh, and just learning how to sharpen your skills with integration and calculus. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.